Okay, everyone. Just to make it simple, let's talk about um, a basic color wheel. I just wanted to simplify color schemes for everyone. Sometimes it's a big ordeal to remember complementary, split complementary, uh, you know, double uh, complement, double complements, um, tetrad, square tetrad. It's just, it's a lot. But I'm going to give you a very easy to remember color scheme. But let me go through all of these uh, very quickly. So I hope all of you are familiar with the basic color wheel. Um, I like to think of it like a clock with yellow at 12 o'clock. Um, red as sort of like if we're going along the clock, it's just like yellow is like at midnight. Red is like orange. And uh, over here, it's like the morning sunrise. Um, then we get to sunset. It's night. Essentially, you've got warm and cool on on one side or the other, going down the the middle diagonally here. Um, but remembering stuff like split complements, uh, double tetrad, square tetrad, uh, triad, all of that it's it's a lot to remember um, amongst other things. So I'm just gonna cram this all into like a five minute lecture that'll be easy to remember. You can also think of it like pizza and I'm going to get to that pizza part at the end. So basically we've got um, the basic color wheel then we can think about the sim at, at its simplest we've got um, monochromatic colors right which essentially means you're working from one color at a time and if you add white to that color you get a tint okay but you're staying within one hue and I'm gonna use the word hue and color sort of interchangeably it's more precise to say hue but let's just let's just move on so you've got a very simple one hue palette which can be either white gray or black added to that color and it still remains monochromatic so if you add white it's called a tint if you add gray it's called the tone um, so we've got grays added to single colors and next would be shade and shade typically doesn't look good because the colors will tend to shift hue with the shade so anyway um, that's it tint tone shade remember that monochromatically um, the next one is called complements which essentially means two colors that are opposite of each other on the color wheel so any two pizza slices if you will that are opposite are going to work together it's going to be a successful color scheme um, the next one is a triad and the initial triad is your basic primary colors primary colors are colors you can't create from two other colors they're your starting point if you will and if you form that perfect equilateral triangle, any of these color schemes will work, okay? Um, the next one is analogous. And think of that as pizza slices that are all touching each other. They're all in one group, okay? And it doesn't matter like how many there are. You could have three, you could have five, as long as they're all touching each other, the pizza slices are all next to each other. Um, I have to fix this one here. Near complementary is when they're not quite across from each other. They are opposite, but like one over. So instead of yellow being across from violet, it's across from red violet, or it's yellow across from blue violet but they're next to the opposite um the opposite color okay you can see the shape of the pizza slices i think you get that and the next one is split complementary so basically it's not the color that's opposite of the initial color it's the two colors that are on either side of the complement so instead of yellow and violet 
It's yellow and blue violet and red violet. I think it's kind of split in hairs, but whatever. And double complementary is where you have two colors next to each other across from two colors next to each other. And you can just kind of think of it as um, just a wider uh, complement as opposed to double complement. It's, it's like it's split in hairs. Um, next, you've got the square tetrad, which is basically two complements that form like a square or a cross. And those color schemes should work. Right? Okay, so, and then you've got alternating complementary, which is basically a triad plus a complement. So if we're thinking about, um, if we're thinking about the yellow violet, then you would add red and blue because they form, so they form violet. So it's a triad plus a complement. Don't worry, this isn't going to be on a test. Okay. Um, and then you have a chromatic, which is essentially black, white, and shades of gray, but no hue, no color. Okay. Because if it did have color, then it would be monochromatic, one color. But this is uh, basically your values. Um, just all the range you have between white and black and everything in between. The one, the only one you really need to remember and apply is called analogous complements. And what that is, is you've got analogous colors, which are colors that are next to each other on one side of the color wheel. And the complement is the one that's across from it. So you can view these as pizza slices, but you have, it, what it, the thing is that the analogous complements includes the other most of the other color schemes. You've got yellow and violet, which is a complement. You've got uh, yellow and red violet, which is the split comment, or blue, violet, and yellow split complements. If you have them both, uh, you've got alternating complements. You've got the triad of yellow, red, and blue. You've got the, uh, oh, I, got, I forgot what was the last one, alternating complements of the triad, but it's all of them. Like if you turn all of them on, it it would fit within this diagram. So basically, if you paint in an analogous color scheme and then add a complement in that smaller proportion, it'll harmonize. It'll It'll just work. So this is all you need to learn because it includes all of them. Easy, right? So you can still use your variations of value, tint, tone, shade with the colors, but as long as you've got an analogous group and a complement, you're good to go. I hope that clears things up and I hope that's easy enough to remember and apply more importantly. All right, so good luck to you, thanks.